All right, well, welcome to the May the 4th edition of Cooper Weekly Community Meeting. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. All right. Um, I just dropped the document link in the Zoom chat. If everyone wants to go ahead and pull it up and log attendance real quick. Of course, as usual, um, it's open to adding items to the agenda notes, open floor, and noting PRs and mailing list review uh, combos or bugs that need attention. Please feel free to go ahead and drop things on the agenda as needed. If we have anyone new on the call today, please feel free to speak up, introduce yourself. Uh, let us know what brought you here. Okay, may I start? Yeah, I go just, for it. I just developing one interesting feature and I found that um, I don't like how the network is working in Kubebird and I'm trying to implement a different way. So uh, I used Macvet up uh, mode to bind to the pod networking. Got it. Do and you have, have a, hang on just a second. Do you have a PR or something like that to add it to, or do you want to add a yes, yes, a I have point to agenda notes that describes what we're talking about? Okay, let me find it. Hubert. Uh-huh, got it. Where should I put it? Um, we can either, if, if it's a, a formal PR or something like that, you can yeah. go ahead and just, there. there's a link in the Zoom chat that brings you to the community meeting notes. Okay, I, I can see it actually the document. So I send it to the okay, chat. Okay, that works. If you can edit the document, I think that you are not, um, you have not registered somehow. Um, Catherine, how was the process again? Yeah, I'm getting, pulling that up right now. Thanks. All right, uh, the general community information is on this Cooper IO community page. Mm -hmm. And then to have edit access to the meeting notes, you can join the Google group. Uh, and that gives uh -huh. you access to be able to add items to the agenda and things like this. Um, I went ahead and added your PR here in the notes for you. And We can go ahead and discuss it real quick. Um, I don't see anyone adding anything else to the agenda. So I see no reason to do this in any other order. Thank you for your patience, letting us kind of show you the ropes on the community uh, engagement model and go ahead and take it away. Let us tell, tell us about your might be tap binding mode. Me? Yeah. So that's it. Um... I was trying, I was making some benchmarks of the latency and I found that uh, using the Mac VTAP mode is, uh, has less latency than using Bridge. And actually, um, yeah, I haven't attached any uh, benchmarks here, but they're in Slack thread. Uh, so it's actually has the same latency like uh, using standard VH interface or 
I was also doing some research by removing that interface and replacing it with the tab on the host namespace. And I think that this mode is the best one <clears throat> for the latency. And I would like to make it merged into a big project. So anyone from the networking folks here probably may pick it up. Okay. I, I see only, I'm not sure, Miguel, um, I guess you, you are not, you're not available for talking at the moment. Okay, so I think we ah okay. I guess that he he has probably microphone issues. Let's let's uh, have patience with him and. Uh, thank thank you, Miguel. Yeah, implementing this book was kind of funny because uh, Macve tap interfaces are slightly different than standard tap interfaces. Uh, the first thing I wanted to ask: uh, Why do we have the special handler? which is creating the interfaces inside the uh, pod namespace. I mean, I mean, uh, virt, virt root or something like that. Yeah. All right, we're not giving up on Miguel just yet. So anyway, uh, the main, uh, the main Implementation was about uh, creating the MacWet app interface, and there were some problems with the device which is creating for it. So I was sending it to the C groups for the pod, and now it is working as a charm. Awesome. Can probably explain why we are using the weird Harut. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, I can. Yes. Perfect, thank you. So I think initially it was, the program was initially created because we wanted to overcome the Golang architecture mm -hmm. where you can't really create a thread which would then switch to the name space of the, of the pod. And therefore we just create a new process um, and the process is the weird carrot, which knows how what to do then. So it's just to yeah, I see. It. So this is because of the amount namespace, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I um, mean the network namespace. So we want to switch the network namespace. But if you would do it in the weird handler, you would switch like the whole process. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, that is that is. So that's it. I did the implementation of adding tap of a tap mac with tap interface inside uh, this handler. If the parent is specified, it will create mac with tap instead of standard tap. And there is also some uh, additional um, additional implementation, which is uh, switching the permissions for this device to allow it to use inside the pod. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Oh God, at last. Uh, yeah, I'm very sorry to join this late. I'm very interested on this, on this um, subject, but I lost the beginning of um, of the conversation. Discussion. Yeah. Yeah. The main reason was to have less latency in network. <clears throat> I found that bridge mode and uh, masquerade mode is bringing more latency for the network than using the MacVetap devices. If you use MacVetap on top of Vetch, it will uh, have the same latency as you put just as, as you just put the tap interface of the virtual machine on the host namespace. So this is almost the native uh, performance, I guess. 
yeah like the um, let's say the advantages of using it are quite um are quite easy to grasp and uh like th the thing that concerns me the most is not what you're trying to do is literally that we when when well basically i developed the device plugin and the and the cni for that we're using for this for the secondary networks and like as i've said to you like we never consider this to, to develop what you're doing right now so it's yes i know good actually, it's good actually <laughs> go ahead yeah go please ahead. go ahead no i'm just trying to say that it's good that you're finding like new use cases for this and like i'm just a little bit concerned because we've never tested this like this thoroughly or meant to do it like this for instance this scenario where we like i don't know how this will conflict with the dhcp that is running on the um, on the host on the lower device that's on the host like these sort of things we've never tested them we assumed there would be like one single uh, DHCP server on the entire, like on the, on the lower device and that was it. So. Okay, uh, look, uh, right now uh, the this PR is supports both modes. If you use Macveta P9, mm -hmm. there is just small if check. If the host device created for port is, is it marked in the top device? If it's so, it will just simply use it. Like we do that right now. And if it's not, it will create a MacWetup device on top of it, like the parent. Uh, and it will also, also create the MacVLAN device for the DHCP. I tested it with the Silum and with the Bridge plugin. It is working fine. And I also wanted to try, um, because I implemented this logic that it is possible to run a DHCP inside the port for the MacWetup CNI plugin. But it is not working because um, probably MacWetup Sinai is not exposing the EPAM block into the into the Sinai arguments. Yeah, that's quite, yeah I, if I remember correctly, that Sinai does not understand. Um, like it will not call the the chained IPAM plugin. But I to be honest, correctly. it was just experiment. I mm -hmm. I just wanted it to make it working with my PR. Uh, yeah. But actually, I don't need that because I'm considering using both, like uh, this mode for binning pod network. Actually, we use Cilium and using MacWetup CNI to binding normal network and using uh, independent DCP server there. Right. Like one, what one of the things that I did not have yet the time to go through your PR. But like one of the things that I, like implementation wise, uh, and I think I've said this to you over Slack is like the way you're granting access to the, um, to the tap, to the tap uh, device. So if I understand correctly, you're just like uh, creating like, well, a new device with the same major and minor number. And well, it works because of that, but doesn't it require to be, doesn't the launcher container require additional privileges? Well, this has been made for that. No, it is not. And there is, it, it is done by handler. <clears throat> privileged, of course. Yeah. Yeah. First uh, we create device using um, the tab device maker, if I remember correct. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we use uh, special uh, C groups handler, which is uh, allowing the C group of this pod using this device. And only after that, okay. uh, the virt will allow to attach it to the network. So, and is the pod, uh, where do you write that C group specification? Is it the pod template? Uh, once again, uh, where where are you uh, like specifying that the pod yeah, requires that's, this particular C group? That's done by the virt handler. First, it is invokes the this special binary for creating tab inside the um, pod namespace, mom namespace. Uh, then it is also creating dev tab uh, number device, 
And, and then uh, the next function is creating the C group. It's actually adding the device to all list for this C group of the pod. Yeah, but that's, that goes into the pod specification, right? When you create the pod, you say that this pod will require these C groups. No, this no, no, there that... is no changes in uh, from the user side. It will just allow the using MacWetup for in, for the meaning default network and any other CNI. I need to take a look at your code. Like, uh, but anyway, the what I'm the only thing that concerns me seriously is that if if we use like with when we wrote the device plugin approach, we actually considered doing this, just create a new device with same major minor and give access to it. Our concern was that something on the Kubernetes API would overwrite the C group allocation. That doesn't happen now, but in a way we chose to, well, to use the Kubernetes framework. So mm -hmm. that's the thing that I'm, <clears throat> Excuse me, that's the thing I'm most concerned uh, on your code, but yeah, let's take the discussion there. Like, I think it's very valuable, um, like the feature itself. And as you said, like the advantages are pretty, uh, well, obvious, like it performs a lot better in terms of latency. So I will take a look at your PR whenever I can find time. Thanks. Yeah, I was also did some research why your plugin is working, why MacWetup uh, Cena is working out of box. Because I think it is because it is using uh, standard Cena functions to moving device uh, into the pod, and it is handling this all these things um, by itself. But since we're doing that from the Qbird by Bird handler, we should do that by ourselves. That was one discussion we also had in the beginning, like should this this functionality be located on a different project or in the, well, in Qbert, in the handler thing itself. And I managed to convince the community back there that we should actually have all this functionality in a third party location and just leave the, the binding parts on, on Qbert. And that the, the 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 reason was that we could just leverage the the device plugin architecture, not architecture, the framework to to do this and leave Qvert not caring about the device at all. So, but we can revisit this discussion as well. Yeah. Anyway, we need to make some top devices um, to be able using it with the virtual machine and all these bridges. So this is just another method. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Awesome. Thank you for your contribution. All right, and with that, I don't see anything else added to our agenda today. Does anyone have any last minute thing to add? Going once, going twice. May the fourth be with you, and we'll see you same time, same place next week. Thank you all. See you all. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Catherine. Bye.